damn it. Um, yeah, so that print supposedly took 69 hours, but clearly the nozzle has got clogged. I'm having some real problems with this white PLA, this particular brand of white PLA. This is a fresh nozzle, pretty much. I took it apart and cleaned it out not long ago, and it's just clogged during this print. Sure, it's a big print, and you might have noticed in last week's video that the supports were certainly looking a little bit thin and stringy. Uh, so I'm printing a skull. This is the base of the skull, but you can see it hasn't finished printing the base of the skull. Uh, do I have another go or do I try some different PLA? What have I got? I know, it was, it's, it's probably like the biggest print I've ever attempted and skulls are incredibly difficult to print in the first place. But I was hopeful that it might work. Uh, failure's, part, <laughs> failure's part of the process, right? And PLA is cheap, just not super recyclable. I could probably use it for something. This is the smaller one I printed. Super thin, look. I haven't finished cleaning it up yet. We've still got some support structures in there. But, printed really nicely, but can you see the thing that's weird? Forget that side, it's this side that's weird. So this is the skull of Phineas Gage, or a copy of and he managed to get a rail, well, a, a spike through there. So there's the base of the skull. You can see the hole, right? In 3D, this is really helpful. And if you look at the calvarium, that's where the spike came out. And it destroyed his, or part of his left frontal lobe. So he's an interesting story in neuroscience, the poor fellow. And often in neuroscience, the, um, the things we learn are through loss of function after injury and somebody surviving, right? And this told us quite a bit about the, the, frontal, the frontal lobe. Um, and I did wonder, so I've seen lots of images, lots of illustrations and what have you, and I wondered if in 3D this would be, um, it would like make more sense where the spike went, oh my word, look at that. And it does to me, it really, it really does to me. Show me where the spike went, amazing. I printed another one in resin. And again, you can see I haven't cleaned this one up yet. Um, it's gonna be interesting trying to get all the scaffold out from inside. But this is in resin, clear green resin. It hasn't completely gone off. Got some shiny bits there. You stick in some more UV. But this printed straight away, first time, no problem. This is, I think this is as big as it'll print on my little UV printer. But again, we'll be able to see the line that metal rod took through his skull. How did he survive? Crazy. Anywho, I wonder if I can do a big one. I wonder if he's even worth doing a big one. Hmm. We've been locked down again this week. Well, <laughs> not really, but kind of, and for a different reason. Storm blew through. Um, when I looked on uh, Friday morning at Brazilli on the web, winds were at 60 mile an hour, gusting to 80. We're 21 foot waves on the beach. What's that? That's like six, seven meters. School shut, university shut, and uh, after the worst of it. Took Annabelle for a vaccination on Saturday morning and uh, saw, saw a trampoline stuck in a tree. Saw, you know, shipping containers, right? Full size shipping containers. That the docks had been blown off their stack. Two of them had fallen and buckled against each other. Amazing, how much wind does that take? And the amount of water on the roads. Good job we weren't driving quickly, but the cars in front of me went through such a deep patch of water that it threw up water on all the cars behind completely covered the windscreen I couldn't see anything and I had to break so you know if I'd been a proper YouTuber I'd have gone to the beach right wouldn't I and recorded all the waves and stuff there were trees coming down on cars and 
trees falling everywhere. We'll probably see some on the route this morning, won't we? Um, and this week's cycling to work. It'll be days before all the fallen trees get removed, I guess. So, I want to go climbing. I want the spring and the summer. So, of course, this is the perfect place for an outdoor lecture about Phineas Gage. Like, if you haven't heard about Mr. Gage, in 1848, he was working on making railways in the USA and um, they used dynamite to clear a path and he had a big long tamping iron again several feet long I think and he drill a borehole put the blasting powder in there tamp it down and then light it you know retreat to a safe distance and all that but the, the powder exploded as he was tamping it and apparently he was just turning his head away with his mouth slightly open about to speak and the tamping iron blew out from his hole in the rock and went through his skull and this was 1848 so this is a long time ago there are a lot of secondary sources that embellish a lot of this but what we can seem to make out now from primary sources from what his doctor wrote was that you know he was conscious within minutes they took him to the doctor lots of blood lots of trauma as you might imagine but he was lucid he was alive and the doctor treated him um, and he developed you know infections and abscesses in later days and that sort of thing but he was treated and looked after and he recovered the reason this comes up in modern medical teaching is because he's used as an example of the left side of his frontal lobe was injured and his personality changed but there aren't that many accounts of what his personality was like before the incident but afterwards I think it's reasonably safe to say that he was more prone to using vulgar language and vulgarities and you know a little bit different oh there we go and um this was taken as well over time by different people an indication of the role of the frontal lobe in that you can survive if you've lost some of your frontal lobe that's the first takeaway right which is incredible enough in itself um, but that the frontal lobe is involved in inhibition in you know personality in performing in modern society and fitting with people but to be honest if I'd had a tamping iron explode and go through my head I think I'd be prone to vulgar language and vulgarities after that wouldn't you? Uh, that's going to make cycling to work tomorrow tricky uh, I'll be able to get around that. To finish off Mr. Gage's tail, he after, you know, he later, he couldn't, for whatever reason, he couldn't work on the railways anymore. But I mean, would, would you? Could you do that job again? No. Could you be around explosives anymore? No. Um, he went and worked as a stagecoach driver down in Chile. So if you consider what that entails, one man driving six horses, looking after the passengers, the luggage, the route finding, because he do routes of up to like 100 miles or so, the changing terrain, you know, all the planning and executive function required to be able to do that. And also then, you know, he'd have to, um, the societal norms required with looking after passengers and engaging with people in a normal way. And that's taken as um, a sign of the brain's plasticity. Plasticity. Difficult to say when you're breathing hard. In that, his brain adapted, he recovered, he, you know, he he functioned normally in society for many years. I don't know why he died, he died in 1860. Um, but I'm not sure what the causes of that were. You can hear the wind in the trees. Uh, I'm protected down here, but it's to about 30 odd mile an hour, 
50 odd kph Ooh, so i didn't i thought i'm not going to do a hilltop run today from an anatomy perspective from my perspective i think it's incredible that somebody could describe this, could survive so well after an injury like that and in the 1800s as well i mean when you're considering patients and people and horrific injuries the things that people can survive is incredible the human body is an amazingly resilient thing How could you ever go back to running tarmac after running trails, huh?